And welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. We have two patterns in one today in today's mega video. For my closed captioning team it's a lot of work to be able to close caption so I'm going to put both of these patterns into the same video because the differences of both of them are so small and we will divide off in the video when we get to each individual one where it does slightly vary. What we have here is that this particular blanket right here is made up of six squares by six squares in order to have this configuration and this one here is only five by five. Now almost the entire square of each one of these is identical except for this one has a motif border that circles the whole thing before you attach it and this one doesn't. And you can tell that because if you see this line right here after this red that's the border and this one here you can see that when it attaches each other it's actually the solid color that attaches. So they both have been uh, worked in a way that makes a lot of sense. So when you look at it from the perspective of the diagrams you're going to notice is that they're put together and all it is is that these squares are turned in a special way in order to have a design. So I went a step further thought how many designs can you possibly get out of this thing? So I came up with several but you can come up with several on your own. So let me just show you that because you can download that on my website on the crochetcrowd.com. It's a little worksheet. I think it has 10 different designs that you can possibly do but I know for a fact there's more. So I figured it out with the six by six configuration the bigger one of the two. Of course if you're doing the five by five it'll be slightly different. So when I looked at it you can turn your squares so that it could look like this and you can even do even more. Could look like that. So do you see that the way that the squares are turned and joined to each other it changes the way that it looks. Now the ones that I came up with near the end are really quite amazing. So it depends on how uh, central you wanna be to this. This is very similar to the original and see by changing the colors you can have like a diamond shape like this uh, by not changing the colors, changing the layout and then this one here kinda reminds me of the tic-tac-toe game. But then I got really creative and if you look at this one just kind of blur your eyes a bit you see a plaid pattern going on. Daniel says he doesn't see it but I think he's full of it. So there you go and then you can just change the color sequence and there you have a plaid in a different way. So there are more other ways that you can do. So if you would like to think about other ways what you could do is just take one of these sheets and literally just run it some scissors up through each of the joins and then run the scissors the other way and then you'll have all the squares and then you can puzzle it like a little puzzle and then you can just tape it down once you've got your um, solution and therefore you can follow your own design. So that's something that's pretty cool and this is a free downloadable on the crochetcrowd.com. So let's talk about the differences. So you can see I worked with this sheet. I came up with my own color solution. So I looked at what was close to it. I went in my collection and then I found my colors that I wanted to do. It is a secret thing or I guess not so secret is that one side of the square is more of a lighter color than the other which gives you that particular concept. So that's something that you need to think about when you're going to work on this. So when you're looking at the color sequence just look at the picture and you can see okay I can see that has to be this kind of color and etc. So, so in advanced preparation I wanted to make sure that I understood the design so I'm going to do my last square and I'll fill it in here so I can demonstrate the border for you. How I put it together is completely up to myself on how I did it. You can see that this is the version that has the border that separates it. The other version that is smaller it would just be this color butting up to this color and so it would be a solid. So that's up to you and you would like how you would like to do. So you're going to notice is that you'll have a center circle like this and they'll all be the same. Now when you start the next section you're gonna notice that the next section is here and it's gonna be a single crochet and then the other side that joins that one is also a single crochet. So I came to realize pretty quickly that when you start a new section the other side is a mirror of it. It's just longer. So then once this section is done you're just gonna start up here and now this has texture and then the other texture is the same exact stitch work. It's just longer and then finally you'll start the next section like there and then you'll do the final section right here in the white. It's just longer again it's the same stitch definition and then in this particular one there was a border. So, so what I came to realize really quickly is that whenever you're butting up against one so if you're starting this one here there's always just five stitches that are in the side of this and then it carries on. So you're gonna notice that there's always five. So it doesn't matter where you are there's always gonna be five on the ends. 
So once I came to realize that and then the, the other number that will exist will get you all the way to the corner. Now as an experienced crocheter I don't need to mark which one is the corner but if it's easier for you to keep count it's great. So you just wanna make sure that you nail that amount of stitches to the corner, do the corner and then nail the same amount of stitches to this pot and then you do your last five. So let's begin section number one. This is for both of the particular motifs. So until I tell you that there's a difference then just keep on going. So we're going to start off with your first color depending on what color you chose. It doesn't really matter to me. Colors are subjective. So let's start off with the slip knot to begin. This is classified as an easy level. It could actually bridge into the intermediate level too. So you're going to chain two. So one and two and then we're going to start round one next. Okay, so let's begin round number one. So second chain from the hook, the very first chain that you did, you wanna put eight single crochets there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and then you're just gonna join it to the eighth one back. If you're not sure just count it back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So just slip stitch to the eighth one back. I always count even as an experienced crocheter. And what we have to keep in mind is that we are going to be, once we slip stitch, we have to turn our work and go back in the direction from which we just came. So if you went over top of the straggler, let's get rid of that now. If you didn't, I would strongly recommend that. It'll save you a lot of time in the future. And we're gonna snip that out. Now round number two I found to be the hardest uh, uh, round of them all. That's because I wasn't understanding it. But once you get this concept, you'll be using this concept in the future when you have this particular stitch return. So to chain one, is our first thing we need to do and we're going to single crochet in the first stitch. Now in the next stitch here we have to do three stitches. So we're going to start off with the long double crochet. So to do that you're going to wrap the hook and going into the stitch and then you're going to pull through. Now normally in double crochet you would pull through two and then two and finish. But it's a long double crochet so you're gonna wrap and pull through only one loop and then wrap, pull through two loops and wrap and pull through two loops. So that's extending it so that it will uh, cause it to bulge out the front which is what you want. You're then going to in the same stitch single crochet and then in the same stitch you're going to do another long double crochet. So wrap the hook and into the same one pull through. Then only pull through one loop, pull through two pull through two. And then you're officially done this stitch here on this on this round here. So then the next stitch is one single crochet by itself and then you're going to repeat what I just showed you. So you're gonna start off with a long double crochet. So pull through. So pull through only one loop. Pull through two and two. Single crochet into the same stitch and then another long double crochet. So wrap and in. Pull through. Pull through two sorry pull through one loop, pull through two and two. So I'm used to doing that for double crochet. So then the next one is one single crochet by itself. So let's do this again. So I'll be quiet now. So long first. Then a single. And then a long. And then the next stitch is one single by itself. Okay, and then start off with a long, a single, and then a long. It gets faster the more you understand this. So once you get that done, you are going to then slip stitch it to the first single crochet when you get all the way around. So round number three we'll finish off this color. So we want to start and we're going to be creating almost a square shape by the time we're done this round. So we're going to just chain up one and single crochet in the first stitch. In the next stitch you are going to put in three half double crochets and this will form a corner. So we have one, two, and three. And then the next three stitches in a row will each be a single crochet. So we have one, two, 
and three. So you can see that almost a flat edge just has occurred. So in the next stitch you're gonna put three half double crochets. So we have one, two, three, and then the next three are, are singles. So one, two, three. The next one is three singles or three half double crochets in the same stitch to make that corner. And then three single crochets in a row. So one, two, three and coming close to the end. So the next one is three halves. So one, two, three. And remember we did one single crochet on its own. So we only have two single crochets left in a row and then you're going to join it. And I'm gonna show you a secret in the next round or the next instruction. So this is officially done. So what I want you to do is just fasten off this yarn. I would highly recommend that to you to hide in your loose ends, get rid of them out of the way. You could do it at the end but you could end up with a massive amount of tails at the end. So let me show you how to fasten off. To fasten off what I would do is just put it onto a tapestry needle. Keep it to the back side. The other side will have the texture. Keep it to the back and just kind of keep it nice and tight into the back side. Don't mess with the outside edge and you're gonna pull through. Now usually um, when you go to do slip stitching with each other like when you come into the end of a round like this it creates a gapping space. So what we're going to do is that I'm gonna show you a little trick on being able to get rid of that space um, by naturally just kind of jumping over it but I'll show you that in just a few moments. So you're just gonna go back and forth a total of three times. Get rid of your yarn and you're gonna move on to your second section number two and using a different color. So let's begin to do that color next. So let's go back to the instructions. We're gonna move on to section number two. You see that I wrote two, three, four, five because it's rows two, three, four, five and I realized that once I did that is that every row has five rows. So I was able to count that without having to check it off on my list. So section number two we're going to build off on one corner to the other and it doesn't matter which way you look at it but what I want you to do is that I want you to look at the corner just before the slip stitching. So go into this corner and go right up over top of that. I'm gonna show you that in a bit and then turn the corner here and then end. So the third, there's three stitches on the corner. The middle one is the corner of the three. So just keep that in mind and if you don't know that just put in a stitch marker if you need to help to see yourself but as an experienced crocheter I didn't need to do that and maybe you don't either. So let's begin to move on to. So let's begin to do section number two, row number one. So I want you to find a corner and there's three half double crochets and it's the middle one of the grouping of three in order to attach that. Okay, so just look at it and it's the middle one. So what I would highly recommend to you is that I would like you to do uh, what is called as a standing single crochet. It doesn't say to do this in the pattern but it makes sense. It says join B with a single crochet which kind of means the same thing. So just put it onto the hook and going into the middle one here and just pull through and you'll have two loops and then pull through two. That's join with a single crochet. So now it says for, that we have to have a certain amount of stitches in order to get to the next section. So what we have to do is that we've just joined the first one and so now there's going to be five uh, single crochets in a row before we get to the middle of the half double crochet on the other corner. So because there is a slip stitch in the between here, the slip stitch appears to be an extra stitch but I want you to kind of just pretend it doesn't exist. So starting in the next one let's count out five. So we're gonna say this is one, okay, and then this is two and you can see I jumped over the space where the slip stitching is happening. So that's two, three, four and five and as an experienced crocheter I can see that this one is the corner so we're going to then turn. So in that one we're gonna put three single crochets in there. So one, two and three. So if you joined it with the standing single crochet and then you added five how many single crochets total? It's six. So after you do the corner there's six single crochets that are left to get you to the corner. So one, two, three, four, five 
and this one here is the corner. And this is the six. So you can see you just did half of it. So what I want you to do is that we're gonna do rows two, three, four, and five. You don't need to follow me on camera for that because it's really quite straightforward but I will get you started. So let's do rows number two, three, four, and five. So turning your work, what you have to pay attention to the most is the middle single crochet that is existing on the corner. So as long as you understand that you don't have to count these stitches and you can go right into the corner that you would like to do. So to start you're going to chain up one and you'll put one single crochet into each stitch and you're looking for the corner space or the corner um, stitch. This is why I almost think it's almost an intermediate level. So the corner is right here. Do you see that? So there, see how this is in the same stitch, in the same, in the same. So this one has to have three single crochets. So one, two, three, and then continuing along this side, put in your single crochets. And so this will be row number two. Make sure you go right into that last one. Don't confuse it by leaving it undone. So that's row number two and now you're just gonna do three, four, and five the exact same way. So look for the middle one of the group and that's the one that gets three. So it's single crochets all amongst there except for the corner one you'll put three. So I want you to do rows number um, three, four, and five now and meet me back here in just a moment. So this here is the end of section number two. So I have five rows of this single crochet. I'm going to fasten this off. I already showed you how I did it in the center. So keeping the right side up we're going to move on then to section number three. But if I were you and you were me and the way that I did the originals is that I would do all of your motifs and getting this section in before moving on to the next section of section number three. So I'm gonna hide in the loose ends and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So we're now ready for section number three. You notice that I put flat flat. I just wanted to make sure that I knew that they were single crochets. So the next section number three is going to start here. It's gonna go to the corner and then down here. So you're gonna notice that there's always five single crochets along the side edge like we talked about. In this case there will be five single crochets in a row and then you have your corner of the three single crochets and then five and then these final five here. Let's begin section number three. Okay let's begin section number three. So starting off on the outside one here and it's already on the hook so I'm gonna do a standing single crochet that's considered one of five. So for the side. So go into the next one. So you'll notice that each row kinda acts as a, its own stitch. So this is two, three, four, and five. Now here's the trick. We know where the corner is. We can see it. Well I can see it. It's right here. So, so what I want to do is that if you're not sure if this is the corner you have to have five single crochets in a row before you get there. So I'm checking. So one, two, three, four, five. So I know immediately I'm going right here. So I'm gonna say one, two, three, four, five. And then the next one is the corner as we discussed. So there's three there. So one, two, three. And make sure that you're only doing the same count on the other side. So we have five in a row. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then jumping to this section here do the five. So we have one, two, three, four and five. And then that will conclude that row which is section number three and it's the first row. So then you're gonna turn your section here and then you're going to do rows number two, three, four, and five. So let's do rows number two, three, four, and five. So just chain up one, one single into each on the corner one here. You're going to apply three single crochets and then you'll do the remaining. I don't bother to count from this point. I just look for the middle one is and then I trust myself. So this maybe is what makes it intermediate for my level. But what you're just doing is just single crocheting across. Enjoy the journey and then when you see the three single crochets in the corner just make sure the middle one gets three before turning to do the other side. So I want you to do rows number two, three, four, and five and then fasten off and then we're gonna move on to the next section which will be section number four in just a few seconds from now. 
So now section number three is done. It's fastened off and now you can see that it has balance once again. So where are we going to start to do row or section number four? We're gonna start here and then build it out and then here. So we're going to go along the two edges here and get ourselves to the corner. So when we go to start row number, uh, section number four, what we have to do is that we have to get ourselves established with the single crochet and then what we're going to do is introduce those long double crochets back in and that will provide some really amazing texture work. So let's begin section number four. So as we begin section number four, just as a reiteration, I would do all of this section number three on all of your motifs before moving on but that's your choice. So you're going to start off in the corner here just on the edge and you're doing a standing single and you'll do those five in a row. So that's one, two, three, four and five. Now in this section there's going to be 11 single crochets before you get to the corner. So can you see where the corner is at this moment? It's right here. So if it's right here I have to make sure there's 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. So that gives me an indication on where to start. So you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to but that's the easiest. So 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and eleven and then the, the middle one is the next one. So there's three there. So one, two and three and then there's going to be eleven before you get to here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and eleven and then you'll do the five and then that's where you'll meet me back here in just a moment. So I'll see you here in, in, uh, to go to row number two in just a moment. So let's move on to row number two and row number two is going to be repeated when we do row number four. So we're going to turn your work and again keeping an eye on the center of the middle ones here because we're gonna do something special there. But what we do is that we just chain up one and you're going to single crochet in the first. And now you're going to do a long double crochet in the next one. So wrap and going in, pull through, pull through one, pull through two and two. And then single crochet in the next and that's creating texture on the other side. So the next one has to be a long and then the next one has to be a single. So what I want you to do is that I'll meet you close to the corner here. So there's the middle one here and I'll meet you there in just a moment. So continue to alternate between the two stitches. So long single, long single and you were going to finish off so that the there is a single before you do the corner and so that's where we'll end up in just a second. So if you're counting right I have a single crochet and then the next one is the middle. So if you look at it here you can see that their texture is every other stitch. So in the corners on this one here you're if this is a single the first one has to be a long that goes in there. So let's do a long and this is just like that beginning round that we did way back here. So it's a long and then a single into the same and then a long once again. So there's your three stitches to turn. Once that's done you start immediately with the next one and start with a single and then long, single and long and once you get to all the way to the end the last one has to be a, a single. So if you just keep that in sequence that's what will happen and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I just finished the row and I'm turning it and now you can see the texture on the other side. So row number three is the same as it says row number two of section number two. All that it means you'll see that continually referencing it's the single crochets. So all you just need to do is just chain up one and apply one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way to the corner and then it's the single crochet that is in the corner that is the corner itself. So you have the long single and a long if you recall. So that single crochet has to have three single crochets in order to turn and then come down the other side. So apply one single crochet into each of the stitches except for the corner. Put three there and I'll see you at the end of this row. This is row number three. So my single crochet row is done. I'm gonna turn my work and we're going to apply these long double crochets again. So you're gonna turn your work for row number four. Just chain up one and one single into the first and then it's long, single, long, single and of course the middle one of the grouping of three is going to be a long, single and a long 
and then you begin again. So make sure that you're keeping in sequence. So the one before the corner is a single crochet. The one after the corner is a single crochet and the corner, remember it's a long single and a long and I want you to do this. So it's exactly the same row here. It's just longer. So please apply this to row number four and I'll be right back in just, just a moment. Finish row number four. Let's do the reveal. So you can see that there's two layers of texture now that you see and then the final row number five is just uh, one chain up one, one single crochet in each except for those corner. Remember it is the single crochet because you have a long single and a long in the corner. It is the single crochet and you'll apply three single crochets there to make the turn. So I see at the end of this row this is going to conclude off section number four and I'll be right back in just a moment. Okay, section number four is done. So section number five, let's think about this. We're gonna turn it around. So section number five, we'll start here, go up to the point and then back down. So in keeping with the color sequence, the other side, this side's always gonna be darker. This side will always be lighter in order to keep it looking pretty cool. So what we just learned here in section number four is exactly the same thing that we're about to do. So I'm just gonna kick you off to get you started to make sure your counts are right and then you're just gonna do the same thing of two, three, four and five exactly what you did with those long double crochets to have the sequence in play. So let's begin section number five row number one. So let's begin section number five row number one. I'm unfortunately using a color that matches the background. So again I'm starting off on the edge here and there's gonna be five single crochets in a row. Join it with a standing double crochet or a standing single crochet. So one, two, three, four and five. Now in section five row number one there's now going to be 15 single crochets before you get to the very corner of your stitch work. So I'm just gonna check that. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen and fifteen. So I can see exactly where I need to start. So let's count those out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So there's my fifteen. Here is the corner. So you'll have your three single crochets there to form it. And then what you have to do is get your fifteen here between here and here and then the five at the end and that's where I'll see you back here in just a so moment. Just come all the way to the other side. So rows number two, three, four and five is exactly what you learned here. So when you turn it around you chain up one and do one single crochet in the first and then a long single, long single. The middle one of course it's going to be a long single and a long single and then carrying on. So remember the one before the corner is a single and the one after the corner is a single and just make sure you maintain that that corner just as you see it. So continue to do that all the way to the edge and then you're going to turn your work and do your single crochet going back and then when you come back again you'll do the same with single long single. Do your corner exactly the same way and then come back and then finish it off with the single crochet row. So it's exactly what you already learned. It's just wider. So please do that and this will then conclude row number five or section number five and I'll be right back in just a moment to kick you off in the next section. So we're now moving on to section six. So section six and seven are the conclusion. So what I didn't realize that when I was looking at the particular picture of this when you look at it you don't realize that there's actually a third texture going on which is going to be in number six. So we're gonna be creating a chain one spaces as you see here in row number three and then we're gonna be doing long half double crochets to fill those in. So it's a nice slight texture. It's not too crazy and then you'll finish off your fifth row with just your single crochet. So it's just a matter of getting ourselves started once again and we're concluding. So at this particular point if you love the concept so much that you could actually use this square as is now and you could do a border if you wanted to and start joining it but we're going to go bigger. I believe personally myself. I like bigger squares because there's less to do. I don't feel it is daunting if you have like a gazillion squares versus a few. So this is one of those ideas. So when you go to start this one here you're going to start along this edge going up and back down. So I'm gonna get yourself started and we're going to begin to move on to section number six now. So let's begin. This is actually a different shade of that. I know it's hard to tell that but it is. So I'm using yarn that I have here instead of running out to buy it. So what I want to do is that I want to join into the corner like I have been and that's a standing a single. 
So that's one of five. So that's moving along two, three, four, and five. So on this particular one here, we have to get ourselves to the corner. So how many is it gonna be? It's going to be 21. So there'll be 21 between uh, the corner here and here. So you can just start, if, if you feel confident, you can just start. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and twenty-one. And so the next one is the corner. So I know I'm right. So then what you have to do is put your three in there to turn. So one, two, three. So remember 21 between here and here and then do the other five that are left over. Please do that. This is row number one. So as you finish row number one, you're gonna turn your work and just do a straight single crochet row. Remember three into the corner. So just chain up one, one single in each, except for the corner, put three in there and then continue down the other side. Please do this for row number two. So row number two is now complete. In row number three, we're going to create chain one gapping spaces. So I'm going to get you started. So just chain up one and one single into the first. Then chain one, skip one, one single into the next. And you're gonna continue to do that. So chain one, skip one, one single. So let's do this all the way to the corner. And if your math is right, the corner will have your three single crochets like you're supposed to have and it will land exactly where it needs to. And now skipping one, this is the corner. So that you're skipping one, this is the corner. So there'll be three single crochets into that one. And then chain one, skip the next one and then start single crocheting and then chain one. And you'll do this all the way to the other side and if your counts are right, the very last stitch should be in the same sequence. So this row here is actually relatively quick. Which I do appreciate because that as projects get bigger they get slower. So then chain one, skip one and the last one is a single crochet. So that is row number three. So you're gonna turn your work and let's do row number four and we're gonna introduce long half double crochets. So the long half double crochets are gonna be very much like the single crochets. So what we're going to do is instead of playing on the same line whenever there's a long half double crochet, you're playing into the stitch here that's below. Let's begin. So you're gonna chain up one. So on top of the single crochets there will always be single crochets and when there's a gap space which they're about to be, you're gonna go here. So just wrap the hook first and then go right into there so that the strand goes over top and when you pull it, you're gonna pull a little bit longer to get to the same height and then pull through all three. And this is creating a texture on the other side. So the other one's a single and then a long. So long in, pull through, just pull some slack and then pull through all three. And you're gonna do that all the way to the corner. So in the corner, you're only, you're going to apply three single crochets into the corner to turn and continue the same configuration. So whenever there's a chain one space, you're putting in the long half double crochet and whenever there's a single, you're just putting a single. So I'll meet you at the corner in just a second. So as you get close to the corner, so there's a single crochet after the long. The middle one here is the corner so there'll be three single crochets there. And so the next one is a single, so it has to be a single. And then you start with those long half double crochets, putting them back in, followed by single crochets after it. You'll do that all the way to the end. So this will conclude this row in a second and we'll uh, talk about the final row in just a moment. So I've just finished off row number four. You can see the texture is really neat. It's so subtle but it's fabulous. So the very final row, just chain up one. It is one single crochet into each. Of course the corner, the middle one of the grouping of three has three single crochets and then turn and go to the other side. So please do this all the way across and I'll see you back here in a moment and then we'll continue along and moving on to section number seven momentarily.
So we're getting bigger and bigger zooming on out so you can catch it all this fabulousness in one <laughs> screenshot. So we're going to do section number seven. So section number seven we're going to start here and work our way across and then back. What we just did is exactly the same thing it's just wider. So I'm gonna make sure that you get started with the same stitch counts that you need in order to do it and then you're going to do the other four rows on your own and then that will conclude then off section number seven. So let's begin and starting another color now. So let's begin section number seven row number one starting off in the corner and there will be five. Now I kinda wished I had a different color other than the, the off white being close to the cream color but you know it's a life and uh, you may wanna do one sample square now that I tell you this at <laughs> near the end of the tutorial. You know you might wanna just do one and just kinda see if you like it or not. That's up to you. So once you get your five in, okay so one, two, three, four, five. In this one there will be a total of 25 stitches between here and the corner. So I'm just gonna count backwards so I'm making sure I got it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, two, two, three, two, four, twenty-five. So if I was ever wrong, I would just slam in a stitch or I would skip a stitch. Okay, so that's just something I would do if you weren't watching me. So I'm going to do twenty-five. So this is two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. And 25. And then as soon as they get to the corner here, three singles. One, two, three. And then slam in another 25 between here and the edge. Sorry about the lighting on this. And then five into the end. And we'll just conclude this row off in a moment. So I've just now made my rate counts. So then you're going to then progress then to rows number two, three, and four, and five. Just like you did row number, um, oh sorry, section number six. So the next row will be a single crochet row. The next row then after that is that skipping of the stitches so that you can do that your chain one and single crochets and then row number four is inserting those long half double crochets and then row number five is just slamming in your single crochets to finish. So please do exactly what you did in row number or section number six. Sorry about screwing up that, that verbal but it's the same thing that you have here. It's just doing it on this side. So let's do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I've now just finished section number seven. So we have to make a choice. If you are working on the log cabin with the comfort, this is where you're going to enter your story and you are going to fasten off and you'll have a nice clean edge of this color and this color depending on what color you're going to do. So when you go to join it with your neighbor, you're going to want to make sure that you pick at least one of these colors in order to do it. So if you join this to this just make sure that you're consistent and I'm gonna show you how to do an invisible join. For those that are working on the autumn lot autumn log cabin. You, we are then going to do one round using the same one. So it says to fasten off but you really don't need to. We're gonna start here and we're going to evenly space 35 stitches between here and then the corner. So your corners are three single crochet and then 35 and then three single crochets in the corner and etc. We're gonna go all the way around to conclude that. So you have to make a decision which one you're going to do. You can do either or I believe in this case or uh, for this particular example. So if you, even if you're doing the larger one you probably could do it um, just like I'm uh, just stopping here as well and that's something that you can decide. So we're going to move on and just do the final border of the larger one only and for those that are uh, ready to join just fast forward to the joining process now. So for those that are doing the border of each of the motifs you're just gonna chain one and in the same one you'll apply three single crochets. So you're going to want to count 35 stitches between here and to the edge. So if you've got like 34 just put in two double cro or two single crochets into the same stitch. Just make sure that you have 35 done before you get to the corner and then the corners are three single crochet and then continue along to 35 and do that all the way around. So I don't think I need to show you that. So just make sure that there's 35 in between each of the corners and be right back in just a moment. So for those that were doing the border version 
for your squares just slip stitch when you get all the way back around. Uh, really no issues at all. It's really quite easy. I'm so surprised how <laughs> easy this pattern is. I love it. So I'm going to fasten this in uh, off sorry and I'm going to weave in my ends and then we're going to talk about joining and I'll demonstrate an invisible join that will serve your interest the best. So I'm zooming on out so we're ready to do the join process. So how you turn this square is how it can create those shapes that we talked about in the very beginning. So you can see that there's layouts that are provided to you. We also have other layouts and when you look at it from a perspective like this all you can just do is just look at it side by side so you see that the darker color is down there so you can see that and then the next one would be like that as it joins the corners and etc. And you can see it does a really cool idea. So you can get this look if you do the final border um, around. But if you are butting it up against another border uh, that you have and it's solid like this what you have to do is choose a color that is the best. So if it's just uh, if you're joining it up with another uh, off white on the other side I would use off white to join. Now you have to choose when you have joins that are happening. So you're going to, uh, in the sense that you will see that sometimes you have a different color. So you see that this red here will join with this off white here. So you have to choose one color or the other. Don't choose something else from the rainbow because then it will be really obvious. And what we wanna do is an invisible join on the back loop only and work our way across. So I'm gonna grab up my other sample and finish that square off and this is how you're going to join. So we have the other three that are already joined. So how you turn the square will de determine how it's going to create the patterns as you see, right? So it's actually kind of a neat idea and it's something that you can determine to follow so you can see it kind of would go up on an angle uh, color wise. But in this case I wanna kinda just match it to be like that. So I want to come into the top corner and I like to either um, slip stitch in this direction or like do my, my sewing or I like to come straight on down. The other side here I'm going to use um, a slip knot to begin and I want to put the other side of this strand here on a tapestry needle. And my goal is is to match the back loops together. So let me just bring you in a little co closer. So starting in the upper corner stay in the back loop only. So just looking at it here. So stay in the back loop. So go in the back loop of this one and then in this corner here just peel it back if it's not sitting right and go into the corner and grab the back loop of that one. So don't go into both and you're going to pull through and you wanna put the other side through this slip knot and that will lock it from falling out in the future. So just pulling it, pulling, pulling it. So I have enough of a strand here so that I can put this together. So in the sense that I can follow through with several uh, squares. So going into the back loop of the next one and the back loop of the next one here and I put the straggler down over top of it so it gets stuck and I'm just gonna pull. And when I pull I want it to come right directly across. This is called a whip stitch but it's an invisible join because you are using those back loops only. So coming to the next one and next one. So I'll do about two inches maybe of that coming down just to coming over, over top of that strand. And you can also toss it to the back side if you want to. Just put it up underneath and use your tapestry needle to hide it in the back side as well. That's something that you can decide for yourself. So going into the next back loop and the next one and you're gonna do this all the way until you get to a corner which I will show you in just a moment. So please do that and I'll see you back here in a second. And once in a while do give it a good tug and you'll see that it will kinda sink down out of, the, out of the way and be completely flat. So it's an invisible join that makes the join completely flat. So if you go in both strands on each side you will have like a raised edge like a window seal or a window pane. So please do this all the way to the corner. I'll see you there in a second. So I'm getting close to a corner. So what I like to do for my own personal benefit is that when I get close to a corner the corner stitch that exists. Not only do I want to go across like I just did but I also wanna come diagonally to the same one across diagonally and using the same one again come into this one here, the back loop here. So the last one that goes in I'm attaching it to all three sides at the same time. So if there was only doing the three 
in here and this was missing. So this one went to over and over. So you continue to do that so you get a, end up with a nice flat join. So then you wanna turn your project if it's easier for you. And then continuing on the back loops, continuing down to the edge. I'll see you back here in a moment where I'll show you how to fasten this yarn off once you get to the other side of a corner. So you can attach as many as you want to. Um, if your strand is too long it's kind of awkward. So you, as long as you know how to hide in your tails it's not a big deal. I'll see you back here in just a moment. I might as well leave another tip for you because I actually do this quite often but so for example you're getting to the end and you're noticing that you're going to be short on one side. So if I was short on one side what I would do and this is not happening to me but if it was I would go into the same one I was just in. So say like for example this one is short like this which it's not I'm just stretching it but if it was like that what I would do is stay in the same stitch on this side even though I've already done it and then just progress down to the next one and what that will do is it will pull it back up. And so you can do that a few, uh, several times but I wouldn't do it all in the same spot. So just kind of keep looking and adjusting that way. It's kind of a little trick to the trade I suppose and that's something that you can do as well. So when you get all the way to the other side make sure that it looks relatively flat. Even if it's off by a little bit it can be adjusted in the sense that the next row will make maybe make it more balanced. So at the very end of this I'm going to just tie a knot so that it ties on to each, each other so I can hide in my loose ends. So I'm just gonna tie a knot and then on the back side here I'm just gonna run the hook or sorry run the needle underneath three times like we have been before. And therefore that should never fall out on you as well. So take your time with the joining process uh, for your strands and just adjust things if you have to and then you're, we're gonna progress on to the border next as an example and that's going to be next. So we're now going to progress to the border. The border. So here's the trick. We have to make sure that between the corner single crochets and there will be three single crochets in the corner but, be, but the edge corner itself Okay, so there will be three single crochets into a corner. You have to make sure that the first one plus all the remaining all the way to the next one on the other side and this one is an odd number. If it's not an odd number nothing will work. So this is why both of the borders can work together in the sense that if you really like this border instead of this one you can mix and match as long as that the first one is an odd number. So there is a color sequence that is available to you so you can follow that on there. So I'm going to choose the to do this version here because that's the square I was focusing on but you can just look at the colors that you would like to do. So we're going to progress to row number one uh, for both of these and they're both the same and let's just choose our color and let's begin to do that for our journey next. So let's begin our corner and what I would do is start off with the standing single crochet right in the corner. Okay and then put two more. You might as well do the corner while you're at it. So remember that the very corner stitch is the middle one. So this one plus all the rest all the way across except for the very middle one of the next one should be an odd count. So there should be an odd number between this one and the one you will get on the other side. So you can either count it as you go and just evenly space it. So evenly space it as you hit over top of these joins to get there. So I'm just going to um, what I would think about doing is just putting in your single crochet what you think it should be and then count it before you do your final corner and then make a decision whether you have to adjust it just by one stitch in order to make it work. So let's just go over top of one of the joins as we go and just uh, review that in a second. So I'm coming up close to where they're going to join so I'm equally spacing it so that it looks good as I'm going across. So you may want to go right into the join itself and then just jumping on over and make sure that it still looks flat as you pass over that join. So if you wanna lay it down on something just to check it. If there's, if it's not flat um, in the sense that it looks roughly it means that there's too many stitches and if it looks like it's pulling in then it means that there's not enough. So just continue to do that then all the way to the next corner and I'll be right back in a, so in a moment. So I'm just starting the corner here. So I did count and unfortunately if I do the single crochets three times. So the first one that went in there is counted as part of that and I had an even number of 78. So what I can do for my own benefit 
is that what you uh, can do just to get it to go right is that the last stitch before you start the corner just pull through. So do a two together and then go into the corner stitch and then pull through and therefore that will be 77. So then this is the middle one and then this is the last one. So what I've done is that I made two stitches just become one uh, there before I did the corner and therefore I can keep my sequence in play. So that's something that you can do. So you would wanna do this all the way around and I'll be right back in just a moment. So when you get all the way around make sure your counts are right and therefore the excessive counting is now finished. We're now moving on to row, uh, round number two. We're not changing colors. Both of them are the same way and what we have to pay attention to is the middle one only. So right where we are we're attached to the first one of the group of three. So that's a single crochet. The next one is the middle so you have to put in three single crochets in the middle of a corner and then just progress down. It's one single crochet in each and then three into the corners and you'll do that all the way around for round number two. I'll be right back in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the end of number two. So it turns out I've been making a mistake that I thought round number four is going to be where they divide off and to do the different ones. It's actually round number three. So once I get all the way around I am just going to slip stitch the first single crochet. And then we're gonna talk about round number three because they're different on both but in actual fact there's an extra round in the large one and all it is is that we're just delaying the inevitable in the end and I'll explain that in just a moment. So let's get rid of this yarn here. We're going to move on to number three. Both the number threes have the yarn being changed so you have to keep that in mind. Let's go back to the pattern now. So as we talked about the bigger one here that you see has that extra round number six. This one ends on round number five. So you're going to notice in round number three on the big version I need you with the color E or whatever color you decided to do is do one more round of single crochets that you that we just did. So you're still gonna put your three single crochets into the center of the corner but just continuing to go around. But in round number three on the smaller version we're going to progress to doing the skip stitches so that we'll do long half double crochets later. But if you look at row number four of this one, this row number four equals row number three of this one. So all I'm just going to tell you to do, if you're doing the bigger one, just do one more round of single crochets and then for the rest of us we're going to continue then into the journey. So what I'm about to start then is round number four of this one and round number three of this one. So I'm just gonna say in the next round and you'll assume that it's it there. So if you don't want it for the big one, if you don't wanna do this extra round, you don't really have to if you don't want to uh, but that's something that is here in the pattern. So I'm going to progress to round number four now on this one and round number three on this one which is the same information and what we need to do is then just to, uh, to create the spaces so we can do long half double crochets that are picked in afterward. So let's uh, begin to do that and that's what our journey is going to be. So let's begin and we're going to do round number three of the small version and this is round number four of the large version and remember what I said about the large there is another round of just these single crochet rows. So in the small version there's only two. So coming into the middle one of the grouping of three is that we are going to join with the standing single crochet and then single crochet again. The corners still have three single crochets in them but we wanna do it this way so that we end up uh, exactly where we need to be in the, in the future. So to begin you're gonna chain one, skip in the next one and single crochet the next. So then chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. And if your counts are right you'll end up skipping the last one before the corner and you'll put three single crochets in the corner on the next one and then start again skipping one, chain one and etc. and you'll do that all the way around. So this is technically round number three of the small version, round number four of the large version and I'll see you when you get all the way around. So when you get all the way back around remember that you are putting in one single crochet into the same one as the beginning. So you have some choices to make. Let's just join it and let's yibber yabber let's talk. So what you can do is in the large version it's saying to change the color which will change these into peekaboo colors. So these will just be speckled and honest to God I love the look but in the small version it doesn't say to change the color and to do the next uh, portion anyway. So you have to decide if you're gonna change the color now's the time to do it. If you're gonna keep it the same just hold and we'll do that. So I am going to change the color because I do wanna change those into some peekaboo colors that are really quite fabulous. Let's begin to do that next. 
Okay, for those that are keeping score, we're going to start off with the next one. So if you decided not to change the color that you're just holding, and if you are, then you are moving, we're all moving on now to round number four of the small version, and this is round number five of the large version. So we're going to start off, if you've just joined it, you're just going to, and you're not changing the color, just chain up one and put it in single crochet in the center. If you have new color, just put your um, standing single crochet in the center and then put another single crochet in there. So if it's a single crochet, you are single crocheting and if uh, there is a space, you're doing your long half double crochets down in, go right up over top of everything, pull up a little bit of slack and do that. So the next one is a single, And then the next one is a P is the long half double crochet down. So this is going to change this um, creamy color into being like a speckled um, poke, uh, peak booze as you'll see that. So you'll do this all the way across the corners will be three single crochets into each corner. Single crochets have a single crochet and then if there's a space just drop it down with a long half double crochet. And so complete this round and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So this is the second last round no matter what size you're doing and I'm just finishing up. So what you have to do is one more round of single crochets around and around. She goes uh, one single crochet and then that's it. So that includes putting three single crochets in the corner. So when we started we only put two into the beginning. So just finish that off putting that third one in and then join it and then begin. So both of the versions that you don't change color but you can if you want to. It's your creativity. You can decide what to do and because this is the last round you can put your three single crochets into the corner piece which is next and then it's just one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way across. Three single crochets in a corner and then this will conclude today's tutorial. So I'll be back in just a few seconds for now. I'll have this done and we'll just quickly recap and that's it for today. So this is the end of the line. I just finished my last round. I am so impressed on how well this sits. I'm telling you I've done log cabin before and it looks all kind of wonky in the sense that it is really purely flat and it went together like a dream. I love this blanket. I think it's a really great uh, interpretation for crochet and I hope that you've enjoyed it as much as I have as far as creation. So that's it for today. We hope to see you again in the future in another episode of the Crochet Crowd and Your Inspirations Learning Channel right here. We'll see you again and bye bye.